Allulose is the sugar that doesn't act like a sugar and might actually be good for your gut. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, but actually that's been substantiated. So I like allulose. Um, I buy it in the form of syrup when I make pancakes for my kids. And you know, we also get it as, as a sweetener if ever we need to use it. I think it's a great thing to have. So why is allulose different? Why is it different than artificial sweeteners? And just to explain that briefly, um, most artificial sweeteners that we know, you know, you have your, your sucralose, you have your saccharin, aspartame, all of those. They are not very good for us for many reasons. But one of the reasons is they disrupt your gut bacteria. And why is that even important? So your gut bacteria, first of all, there's a lot of these. There's probably more gut bacteria than there are cells in your body. And they have a very specific function when it comes to uh, breakdown and uh, absorption of foods. And you know, they are also a vital component of our general health. If we disturb the gut bacteria, we get issues. And you know this from antibiotics. One of the side effects of antibiotics is you take an antibiotic. What's one of the first things people get? Well, it kills some good bacteria that you have in there. We know that. And people get diarrhea. They get other problems, right? So that's why antibiotics should be only used when indicated. We shouldn't use them all the time because we disrupt those good bacteria and they're important to us. More important so when we use artificial sweeteners, so they, remember, they don't have any calories technically. Um, they do still kind of stimulate centers in our brain. They can still raise or, or elicit an insulin response. So whenever I talk about fasting, I'm usually saying don't take any sweeteners or anything in the fasting period, right? Good. Now, artificial sweeteners really, really disrupt those gut bacteria as well. And they actually disrupt it in a way where they kind of decrease the good bacteria and allow the bad bacteria to, to overgrow. And that in itself, well, there might be bloating and all these side effects, you know, but beyond that, it can lead to insulin resistance and obesity, yes. So when the bad bacteria are, you know, getting the upper hand, what happens is we actually absorb more of the calories that we're eating, specifically carbohydrates. So that's a big issue. So they found that people that have obesity, people that have issues with their weight, a lot of times have an unfavorable balance of these gut bacteria. And they did experiments where they actually transplanted, yeah, and that sounds kind of weird, uh, good bacteria from a healthy person into the digestive tract of an obese person and they lost weight and they got better because they kind of reestablished this, this balance. And a lot of times this balance was uh, disturbed in the first place because of obvious of sweeteners. So that's a long aside. So anyway, gut bacteria are important. We have a lot of them. And if we disturb them in an unfavorable way, uh, it can lead to insulin resistance, obesity, and probably many other diseases. So our gut health is hugely important for general health. Good. Now, um, enter allulose. So why is allulose different? So allulose is a monosaccharide. What does that mean? It means a single sugar, so it's one molecule. And it looks kind of like fructose. And fructose is a sugar that I don't like very much at all. I always talk about fruit in general, you have your vitamins and you have some minerals that are great for you, but the sugar in fruit, fructose, is actually very bad for us because we don't metabolize it the same way as, for example, glucose. Uh, glucose, you know, citric acid cycle and all these kind of things. We talked about energy uh, production. The transport of fructose as it enters our bodies is a bit different. It's a complicated thing, but for all practical purposes and to simplify it, fructose is very easily translated into adding body fat. And that's not a good thing, obviously. So fructose is not very good. Now, allulose looks like fructose, but it doesn't act like fructose. So it kind of occupies the same receptors but it doesn't really get in. Actually, most of it just gets excreted, you know, over 97% just goes out, you know, most of it through urine, you know, and some through uh, feces and so on. So we don't really absorb this at all. So it doesn't really spike our insulin. So it doesn't really make us gain weight because, you know, again, it, it doesn't get in the body. It's not an energy currency that we use, yet it tastes sweet. So that's a great thing about allulose. So, you know, again, it's something that goes through and it, and it turns out also, that it doesn't, as it goes through, because it doesn't get absorbed in the digestive tract, as it, as it goes through, it doesn't disturb the digestive tract, but on the contrary, it seems like it actually helps it out because it can increase the amount of free fatty acids we have in the gut. And those are very important because those are the nutrients for the cells in our digestive tract. So it seems like allulose, so not only don't we absorb it, so we don't have to worry necessarily about weight gain from, allu from allulose, but also it does something good for the gut as it goes through. And that's a, that's a big uh, a difference compared to sweeteners, of course. Um, so we can sweeten things, we can enjoy sweet things without causing us to increase the caloric intake and also be doing something good for our gut. So again, gut health, very, very important. Um, 
when you think of allulose, you know, what other uh, uh, issues we might have with it down the line. At this point, we don't think there's, a, there's any downside to it, really. It is derived, and it's been around actually since 1940s, uh, usually from corn or from uh, sugar beets. Or, uh, and, and so it's like, you know, something that's been around for a while. We've looked at this for a while, and we haven't really seen any really negative impact on, on, uh, on allulose on our general health. So besides the, again, um, uh, syrup that I'm buying, you know, I have it if I need it. Now, here's the caveat on it. With any sweetener, I would say, um, even allulose, even though I like this one the most of any sweetener, really, um, don't use it all the time. And the reason is, again, if we're trying to follow a low-carb diet or people that say they're on a ketogenic diet, an extreme low-carb diet, then giving ourselves sweets, even like allulose, at least on a psychological level, sets us up to crave these things. And that is not necessarily a good thing. So once in a while, if you need to sweeten something, or let's say, you know, if I make ice cream for my kids, you can use, you know, allulose with some heavy whipping cream and some vanilla extract, and you can make a very nice vanilla ice cream. So for a treat once in a while, I think it's a great thing to use. Or if you're baking something as a, as a substitute, I think it's good to use. Because certainly, you know, it is much more, uh, you know, beneficial than, than other sugars, you know. And in terms of other sugars, when we think about um, table sugar that we usually use, you know, so sucrose is actually one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. And so it's also double sugar. So when we use table sugar, remember there is 50% of it is fructose and that's the sugar we don't like. Milk sugar, lactose, is actually galactose and glucose. So it's a, it's a, it's a double molecule again. And with lactose, the interesting thing is most of us have a hard time not most of us, but many people have a hard time digesting milk sugars, this lactose. And you heard about lactose intolerance. And the reason is because it is this double sugar, it doesn't easily absorb, get absorbed in a small intestine where it would usually enter the bloodstream. So it has to be broken down into the two single sugars. And the way to do that is that we produce an enzyme called lactase. So you already caught on. Anything that ends in O's, O-S-E is a, is a sugar, and anything in A's, A-S-E is usually an enzyme. An enzyme is just some scissors, some biological scissors that snap molecules in, in two. So you have this uh, lactose double sugar that needs to be cut into its individual glucose and galactose sugars in order for them to be absorbed. And if that doesn't happen in the small intestine, it goes undigested to the large intestine. So if we have a lactose intolerance, all that means is we don't make enough of this enzyme lactase. What happens then, it enters the large intestine, their bacteria will digest it. And in the process, these bacteria will produce a lot of gas. It disturbs the balance of the bacteria again, which I talked about earlier is a bad thing. And then people have all these issues. So when you buy lactose-free milk, they don't take the lactose sugar out, they add the lactase enzyme into the milk. And that pre-splits those molecules. So you already have them pre-digested, right? Now, that's still a lot of sugar, so you still have those individual sugar molecules in there. And because now, instead of having these uh, many double sugars, you have them split into single sugars. So the total sugar molecules kind of double because remember, you split these, so you have more available and you, it tastes sweeter. That's a long aside. But, you know, in general, we're trying to decrease sugars as best we can, and I think allulose is actually probably an excellent way to do it whenever we need to sweeten something without worrying really too much about, you know, uh, gaining weight and disturbing the microbiome through all those artificial sweeteners, which we really should not use. Thank you.